searching podcasts for Dave, and one more time. Every four years, all of our calendars have an extra day added to them and we all act like that is something normal. Just like, okay, we have an exact measure of time, but we're gonna throw in an extra day every four years just for kicks. Well... Dave and Juan sometimes needs an extra day to get the podcast out. If you're not going to be mad with the planet for needing an extra day now and then, well, don't judge these two idiots. Just saying, this is Dave and Juan. Followed by one. This one you I go. forgot. Ta-da! Ta-da! <laughs> it's been one extra day. A, to- a total oh, of well. a total of one extra day, and we've blown it already. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Hey, America. I mean, I know. Listen, the long nightmare is over. It was 24 hours longer than you thought it would be. Apologies for that, but hey, stuff happens. Anyway, there, you're, you're welcome. welcome. You're welcome, America. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How are you? I'm Dave. I'm Juan. And this is David Juan. More time. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Although we, we shouldn't have to apologize because mm. you know, it's not costing you nothing, everybody. Right. Um, you know, between, between uh, work and uh, church events, because uh, that's really, right? I mean, you know. The, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we tried last yeah, week. Yeah. I was at a so, church so, event. So here you go, y'all. I mean, you know, sometimes we try to be as as you know regular as duck poop, but uh, or is it goose poop? I don't I, know. I've never heard either, and I was kind of thankful. Uh, you never heard that thing like it goes through you like blank through a goose. Uh, yeah, I heard that. I didn't hear it as regular, but yeah, it's through, well, that is through a goose. I'm throwing it in there, whatever. It's it's. Uh, but anyhow, so that's why it was. Yeah, that's right. But we're here. We're here. So just relax, America. We're back here for you. Uh, been a lot of, a lot of living between. <laughs> it's weird, right? We do this sometimes and nothing happens. So I, I, um, so, uh, got you look back. a little tan, man. Back. Where you been? Oh man. That's, that's uh, that was Florida. I don't, I didn't get too, too tan. In the, so here's, here's the deal. So in the time since we, uh, since we last spoke, uh, to America, so I've, I, I probably found a, a new favorite and new least favorite city in America. Uh, so so uh, a little over a week ago, we were in Fort Worth. Spent mm-hmm. the weekend, Fort Worth, Texas. Fort Worth, Texas is awesome. Fort, I just shout out there to anybody. You wouldn't think about it. I mean, and, and, and no disrespect to my friends in Dallas. Oh, man. Dump Dallas. Dallas. Dallas is pretend Dallas is, is, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, try it's, it's Dallas is sort of want to be for Fort Worth is legit, man. That's still, that's like still cowboy, uh, but cool cowboy, you know, like, like, uh, gentrified stockyards and, um, it's a good combination, man. Good combination of, um, really cool things. Bunch of bre- bunch of little breweries and shops and the old stockyards to bring out the old Longhorns and it's a it's a good. Uh, are they good- working stockyards? I think I think they are. Uh, I didn't go that, that, that you know I wasn't that cu- I was more curious in the food and the in the breweries than I was in you know the uh, the actual uh, you know if it's working stockyard. I think I think it it probably is. So a bunch of Longhorns. I've seen Longhorns before, uh, but man. They- it's a monsters. It's a monster. They, they walk them down the uh, the street, but uh, but good. It's a good. Um, uh, like I said, underrated town. I came out. Of, I came out of even my, you know my wife and one of my sons was with me. They were just both like, man, this place is cool. Um, but uh, I'd sent I'd sent you a couple of shots. Uh, yeah, looks great. Along. Looks fun. Just like felt, super chill. And it, and it felt safe. Fort Worth. Now I'm not. I don't want to jinx it, but it felt safe. It felt like every fourth person is probably carrying, and it looked like there are more folks out there that are looking to put down 
a bad guy than there are bad guys. You know what I'm saying? He's looking around like, That's yeah, what I don't you think, need? yeah, I don't think I would try. You know, I, I don't, you know, I don't think I'd try anything out here. But, um, but yeah, um, uh, great. So that's the new favorite city. Yeah, I, I'm gonna come back to it, talk about some cool yeah. stuff about it. But uh, and the least favorite's got to be Palm Beach, Florida, man. And and you would think, right? Like if you if now maybe that just says something about me. If you told me, okay, you get you can go spend four days in Fort Worth, Texas, or Palm Beach, all right, West Palm, Palm Beach, Mar-a-Lago territory. Right. We drove by Mar-a-Lago. Right. Man, give me fourth worth every day of the week. West. I mean, Palm Beach is just. It's very you, pompous. Whoo, and don't get me wrong. Listen, I, I'm a um, you know, I, I'm not a I mean, I'm a fan in many ways of uh, of our of our past president. But driving around down there makes you realize, oh, that's why oh, is there here. a lot of security for him. Or no, no, no. Just I'm, just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying the vibe. I'm just saying. Oh yeah, I was in I'm just, Palm yeah. Beach probably for a couple of weeks in the in the '80s, and it was like that then, and that was before everybody was moving down there. But you know, you drive along the whatever the road is along the ocean front, A1A Beachfront Avenue, it, right? And it was massive hedges and fences, and you know, you couldn't see anything. Well, the, uh, we drove like same thing, right? You're driving and looking and then, uh, everybody, here's, what's funny. So some of the folks that, uh, this, this thing I was at speaking at, uh, were directors, uh, uh bank, like your bank directors, some of the nicest mm -hmm. people, some of the nicest people. I mean, I just, I love, I love this group, but let's just say these are folks that are pretty well off. Most of them. But are so not, they, they were from there. No, no, no. They're all over the country. Okay, they're, they're, most over. of them are like Midwest, a lot of Arkansas, Oklahoma. Good, good salt of the earth. Rich, but really yeah. good, good people. Well, even they were laughing and like everybody's making comments. And of course, everybody's pulling out like Zillow and stuff to see like, what's that place cost? You know, give me the, uh, and yeah. Oh, wow. these, <laughs> oh, no, man, I'm talking 120, 130 million. That's that some of these places out there, 150 million. Wow. Um, Dude, the cars, it's a joke. It's a joke. Like, I don't remember. No, I shouldn't say I don't remember. There's there's some, there's a true at the local gym that drives a Rolls Royce. Okay. So, like, I got, so I, I see a, a Rolls Royce every now and then, maybe a Bentley here and there. If, if I didn't see 10 different Bentleys or some version of Rolls Royces, like parked and moving around, the Ferraris, the Maserati, it's like, it's, it's, it's a joke after a while, right? It's just, it's just literally a, a joke. And as I say, yes, you will find everything in Palm beach, except smiles, <laughs> man. It's like, it's, it's a, it's a perverse competition, right? And the every about 10% of, and, and I'm, I'm not saying this, this is not, it's not being mean. This is being, cause the people I'm talking about are probably just crazy, crazy wealthy. It's just, it's an observation. That's true. If, if you look around, if you're walking around we, and we and we we made the mistake, we asked the concierge of this place we were staying. And by the way. I, you know, I'm I'm the rodeo clown. I am. I'm not paying for this. I'm just, yeah. you know, I'm there to somebody else picks up the room. You're the, the hired are, hand. And look, the rooms are a thousand bucks a night. OK, a thousand bucks a night for where we're staying. And uh, I had somebody that I met somewhere else said, well, how, how is that? And I'm, my answer is straight up. It's all right. It's not. You know what I'm saying it's not not as yeah. great as you would um, as you would think, but yeah, you should uh, try to sublet it. See if you could. You know. <laughs> well, we we asked the concierge for advice. Like, OK, we don't know the area and, and you know, and, and where she. So she gave us she told us, well, the, the place to go, the popular place. And I forget the name of it. The, the, the thing, thing they call it the Ave or the whatever. Well, I, I thought we would, we would I thought we were going to a place that would be you know, like hangouts and mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm a, you know, a little, I'm a brew pub kind of guy, you know, right. you're a, just a, you know, open air bop man, around. Yeah. Just walk around, you know, Park the car. you know, uh, well, we went down there. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's just, it's, it's when, when Rolls Royces and Bentleys and Ferraris are what's parked on the street, you're like, Oh, come on. So like, let's find this little place. So let's, let's, let's the brick top tavern or something let's say that sounds like us 
We yeah. walk on down there, man, it's white tablecloths and, oh, and, wow. and it's like at the tavern. Like, yeah. It's my wife said, I don't know if it's a tavern, but I know it's called brick top. Brick top was the name of the place. And she was like, it looks like people dress up just to hang out around yeah. here. And, uh, and I said, well, and it, but, but, um, uh, that's your around, definition of dress up, not theirs. Dude, I'm, I'm walking around with one of those t-shirts that says, what is it like barley water? Like the, it's the ingredients for beer. That's what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a shirt with that and some shorts. Um, but walking around that area, right. I'm telling you five to 10% of every woman above, say the age of 40 or 50 looks like a spitting image of Joan Rivers. <laughs> Can't smile a, a permanent smile. And don't get me wrong. I thought, I thought Joan Rivers was, a, I yeah. mean, she was, she was a very, she was an older lady and, you know, I thought she looked fine, yeah. but you know, let, let remember, we'll remember Joan, Joan toward the end, you kind of did one of those. Right. You got the chicken neck and the, you know, the tight face. Well, and uh, you know, kind of like just, you know, all of a sudden parts that are like, uh -huh. Slipping. and uh, yeah. So man, listen, that's a business to be in down there. Um, but, uh, now, now that said, it was it was interesting because because the group I was with, who none of these people were from that area, they're from again around the country at this thing. Mm -hmm. I had a blast. As no, I mean, it, it's you know some of so so the so the group I was with was 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 incredible. Uh, you'd have, <laughs> you'd have laughed. I, I end up so I got I'm like the kickoff speaker at this thing, dude. Man, the economy that they, they, they had a con. I don't know if I was the only guy there without a PhD and and. Uh, most of the people there had written more books than I've read, you know, but uh, it was just. Well, was in my funny. case, that, that, you know, you don't even have to be a well-published author to uh, <laughs> have written more books than I've read. Wouldn't have been much. Wouldn't have been much. But yeah, so it was. Uh, and then I end up in a, on a, I had a blast. I had a good time, uh, uh, you know, speaking. And then on the last day, they bring us up on a panel, um, you know, sitting on uh, on the stage. And on I the just, dais? I, on the dais and we're sitting by the table and I end up, I'm in the middle. So I was, I was sort of like, you know, and I got, dude, it was like some guy used to run some government agency. Now he's some big wig. And then this economist, and then the commissioner of banking from, um, Oh geez. What's I forget what the state was. It might've been Oklahoma or something. And, and you me. said back when I was working at the bank in Winn Dixie and Tim and yes. I, <laughs> oh, oh, I told the story. I showed pictures in my speech. Well, it was a funny thing. So, because people relate to that, that's the funny thing. Yeah. So then, so I got, I got, I got a bank regular. I mean, like the, 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 the commissioner of banking from one state here, me, the commissioner of banking from another state here, then some like super accomplished, you know, uh, economist or whoever he was. And then a guy even more accomplished. It was hysterical. I'm sitting there in the middle of this. And, uh, you know, it comes, it comes around, uh, the first time they want a few minutes with, now, I'd already spoken. Right. So these people are, yeah. me. I've been hanging out with all of them. And when it got to me, you know, like, so just get, get a few minutes of, of, of comment to start. I told them, I, I said, you know, guys, I said, growing up, I was watching the tonight show with Johnny Carson. And I said, that was one of my, that was my favorite show. And I still remember there was a time there's a comedian named George Goble and George Goble ended up on a yeah, panel I remember him. with Frank Sinatra. And Dean Martin was on at the same time. And George Goble said, you ever get the feeling that the world is a tuxedo and you're a brown pair of shoes? <laughs> right. And what funny was the group I was saying that to, most of them probably saw that live, right? Yeah. So it was kind of funny and just, uh, and that was the thing. The weirdest thing was, so we go down this list and when it gets to the end, like one of the big guys that runs, I mean, like one of the more senior, more accomplished guys there, he said, well, I want to kick off the questions. And he specifically said, I want to hear Dave's opinion on. <laughs> That's so funny. Now, these people don't know what I'm thinking. I'm sitting up there thinking, I'm the mayor of Winn-Dixie, bro. I mean, I'm just like, I'm thinking of the pod. I'm thinking of this podcast more than anything else when I'm sitting up there. It's like, oh, I wish I had a camera up here, man. I could just. Uh, you should have just started off with, man, bro. Bro. Let me tell you, man, when I, uh, I know, but, but I tell you what, so that, that you event, see, you're is, selling yourself short. I know you're doing event, it for your comedic purposes. But. Oh, well, no, you get to like, know your lane, man. That's my yeah. thing. Know, know your lane, be good at what you do. And, and just, then they let you, they let you be, but it was, but that, that part was great. But yeah. And the other thing I'm, I'm a hundred percent sure of is that if you go to hell, 
if you do something in this world and you just don't get right with whatever you got to get right with or whatever the game, if you go to hell, I'm telling you, the trip to hell is going to be on a plane full of people flying to West Palm Beach. <laughs> See, I, I have been on more planes than I could possibly remember. I have, you know, I, 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 I have flown. I don't think there's a major American city or, or even a modest size American city. I have not flown through flown most of them multiple, multiple times. And my wife was with me on this when she can back me up. There is no more high maintenance, ridiculously, absurdly rude, loud, obnoxious group of people than whoever it is coming or going from the, to the West Palm Beach. Uh, oh, man. And there is that there's an airport there, right? Like a small airport. Yeah, it's not a huge airport, and 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 so there aren't very many direct flights. So I, that's why I caught. Hey, what are you like an hour out of Miami? Maybe. Maybe. I didn't look at the uh, geography too much there, but um, uh, but yeah, I just figured, yeah, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get the direct. I wouldn't do that again, but uh, <laughs> man, I'll fly, I'll fly to, I'll fly to Pensacola and make the drive, man. I don't, you know, <laughs> but uh, it was. I swear to you, this guy. And uh, on the way on the flight home yesterday, and um, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to get into the stereotype because you would know, and I don't want to be a stereotype, but anyway, so I'm on the exit row on the window, my wife's exit row in the center, and these two old folks, and, and you, they're that kind of people. They both, they're traveling together, but they book the aisle seats on the exit row, right? You know, that they're that, they're that pair, like they both Ooh. like the exit row, so I guess they booked early enough and they both have the exit, the exit row. I am not kidding when I say they, I mean, if they're 75 would be a minimum. I'm guessing they're probably 80. No, I mean, look, getting around apparently. Yeah. But I'm thinking like, okay, this is supposedly exit row. You're going to come around here and talk to me. Yeah. about oh, <laughs> yeah. If we got, if we got trouble with this, with this flight, you know, you're going to help people. They couldn't help themselves. Not kidding. When I say this guy need needed to hold on to the seats to walk. Okay. Now look, don't get me wrong again. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm just saying, you really? got to turn to somebody and say, look, I just want to tell you. Exit room. I will. I will. We, step this on goes this down. <laughs> I'm not helping and, you. And they're on the aisle. So you have to step over them, although you probably could because they probably break when you step on them. But I mean, that's like, but that's the bizarro thing. Like they're reading us the, well, that's the other thing you can tell. They don't take exit row serious because they tell you about, oh, read the, read yeah. the, you know, you know, and they need a verbal, right? Have you been on there? They, they, they need a verbal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I got it. Yes, I got it. And yet they will serve drinks to you on exit row. Really? I think there ought double. to be, before you get on the plane, I think there ought to be something. Okay. I need to see three push-ups. <laughs> I'd I never mean, get on the exit row. Well, I mean, that's my, that's my, and you know what? If I get to a point where I literally can have trouble getting out my chair, I don't think I should be sitting there either. And I trust me, I'm not taking it. Because we all don't no, know, but you know, you, you shouldn't be room. you shouldn't be one of the people who are allowed to board early because you need special assistance and also and seated then, on the exit row. Man, I ain't gonna lie to you. God forbid if I was like that plane I was on yesterday. I'm on the exit row. Uh, I'm on the door. I'm on the I'm on the window. My wife's center seat. That plane goes down, and we miraculously, right, are still around. I'm grabbing her and maybe my laptop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Her I'm first. Not yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll you say me. I'll acknowledge it. You kidding me? Hey, man. Yeah. I don't I don't want my obituary to said he heroically stood on the wing of a, of a plane and pulled people yeah. to their safety before it blew up. No, no, no. I'm going to be one of two people. Man, it was bad, <laughs> bro. Let me tell you, I, I videotaped it. <laughs> I thought about going back to help, but you know, then I realized I don't know none of these people. I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, what are they going to do? And I looked around, and half of them were like seventy-five, so they had a good yeah, life. Yeah, they had they a good life, man. It was good. Yeah, you know, if they had got hurt, it would have probably been worse. There you go. But uh, but yeah. So 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 if anybody is is I, I, maybe maybe I don't know. Maybe if you get to a certain uh, um, level of wealth, maybe that stuff is fun. You know, maybe that's that's the but that's the thing. I can't. It just seems like, man, and the, the beach, the beach sucks. I'm going to tell you that right now. Yeah, Atlantic but, Beach is not great. It sucks. It's like I want to walk around. And, and I was joking with the group that we were with, right? These these directors from around, 
and a lot of them from Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, just, I mean, salt of the earth kind of people. We started, we all started talking about Destin for Walton's. I'm telling you, that's the best beach in the world, dude. We were all like, man, that's, this is, uh, so yeah, you anyway. might as well walk like on pea gravel to walk in the, you know, even into the water. So I had, uh, 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 an extraordinarily nice time with, with some, some great, great folks and, and okay. a great organization, but West, but Palm beach is not, um, not where it's at. It's also funny too. everything pretentious. That's so like the hotel we stayed at. So the uh, meals were all sort of buffet kind of, kind of deal. And the food, mm-hmm. food, I mean, don't get me wrong. Food, food was good. But like in the morning, so like you can't just have like, you know, these, these silver things of coffee. It can't just be, you know, regular and decaf. You know, the coffee is European gourmet coffee. European. (laughs) We don't want that Colombian crap. No, no, no. You got in a cafe au lait. Yeah. European. And then for lunch, going through and the lunch was fine. But then that's one big thing. And I'm dude, it was mashed potatoes. I'm sorry. It's what, and I love me some mashed potatoes. But you're looking at it, any human being would have walked up there and said, that's mashed potatoes. No, no, no. They were potatoes pureed. Oh. So like double mashed. <laughs> it's like mashed potatoes to me, bro. But, yeah. uh, so but, but there you go. That's you're talking about people, you know, people getting hurt. Um, this was last Sunday. Um, so I'm early morning. Yeah, I'm working at church again, you know, serving the Lord um that's what i do uh right. and it's it was really cold so a lot of you know frost and moisture on the windshield but the sun just beaming in your face though uh so i'm just driving uh it's a little before seven and yeah i'm at an intersection on you know, pulling under one of the, the the main thoroughfares and i'm the third car turning left and i see a guy coming through the red light. And I said, man, that dude isn't even slowing down a lick. And so I watched him bam into another car, uh, bounced up, rolled. The car rolled. Yeah. Not the guy who ran the red light did, uh, landed upside down. All the windows are blown out. All the airbags, you know, um, deployed. So I stopped. Um, uh, and I'm, yes, you know, I can see the, the driver's side airbag kind of, you know, getting shut on the said, Hey man, you okay. All right. You need some help. I said, somebody's calling nine one one. I'm all right. All right. And then the guy basically crawls out on the roof because the car is upside down yeah. through the back windshield. Okay. Had his hairbrush in his hand. <laughs> now I'm sitting here thinking, <laughs> yeah. What are you doing with the hairbrush? And I don't know if it was maybe he was combing his hair before. <laughs> but you know, I'm, I'm I'm wondering if he was just like doing that and then, then the shock of it just didn't let go. And, I don't uh, know, but so he was headed due east, so the sun was dead in his face. Uh, oh. And I said, "Did you not see the light?" And he said, "Oh no, it was green." <laughs> and and uh, I once said, "No, man, there's some other people who was behind you. That light wasn't green." <laughs> No, it was green. I wanted to say, well, you might want to stick with that sun in your face story. Um, but then the, I guess he had OnStar or whatever in his car because he's now standing outside the car, yelling into the car to somebody who is, you know, checking on the wreck. It must alert when you know, that he was in a crash. Uh, and I, I assume it's because a couple of people had confronted him that he had run the light. And the, the operator was saying, well, well, could you describe what happened? And he said, it was a wreck. And they no. said, okay, but, but what were the details? What caused it? He said, it was just, it was just a wreck. It was just a wreck. Yeah. So, yeah, man, watch him. You talk about like slow motion, just rolling in the air. Yeah. Now you see, we don't do this anymore, but when we first started doing this podcast, you would have, you would have filmed this dude. We'd have had a cool yawn of the week right here, bro. <laughs> we ain't done cool yawn of the week in a while, man. It's been a minute. Gee, well, yeah, man. When every everybody gets innocent when they wreck, yeah, yeah, he was coming. I don't know what happened. Yeah, just you know, yeah. Oh, I was just driving to eighty miles an hour through the red light. I, uh, there you go. I'm surprised you didn't. I when you, I, was, I thought you were gonna tell me. Saw the guy crawl out, so I started heckling him. Like, hey, 
freaking true. What you doing? No, I told you I was on my way to church, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last time I last time I totaled a car was coming out of church, and I was just dropping somebody off. Why did I tell you that story? It's like you know, of all the, of all the places I've come out of in my life, you know, in certain times of the day, and you, you're like, man, you probably shouldn't be on the road, and you know, back when we were young and stupid, right? No. I'm wearing shorts, middle of the day, pull out a parking lot. Total brand new car, but hey, such is life. But it's did you have brand. a hairbrush? So I wish I did. I wish <laughs> <laughs> I wish I try to remember what 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 did I have to think to, to take out of that car. That's the other thing, too. When you get when you wreck, you know, you, your car's being towed away. Well, I, I that's kind of the I mean, I didn't thankfully I didn't have a lot of advice, uh, a lot of experience. Uh, you know, once they tow your car to, to a yard somewhere, dude, it's it's hard to go find you know, like you, you better get whatever you can out of that car before they yeah. take it away. Yeah. You know, uh, but um, there you go. Life lessons from Dave and Juan. We, um, I want to get back to uh, to Fort Worth. Something that happened. So we're coming back from dinner on the um, what was it, like a Friday night, and just for some reason, we just took a different street, just because like we came down one street, looked let's look at this. As we're walking down, uh, looked and, and there was a like a, a cheesecake factory or something. I don't know what it was on the street. And then we see what there were people lined up outside. And my wife's like, I it can't be that people lined up for Cheesecake Factory. And I'm like, well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, all the nice restaurants here, you never know, right? Maybe they are. But then we passed and ended up being a, a comedy club. And it was Hy Hyenas, I think, comedy club. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jim Norton was, was playing that night. Now, I know Jim Norton. I know who he is. My son knew who Jim Norton mm -hmm. was. And we're like, yeah, you know, we got time. And, you know, I don't, I don't speak to you know, after lunch the next day so we can hang out. And, and um, I said, oh, we should do that. Let's see. We'll get tickets or whatever. And my son and I know who Jim Norton is. And she's like, well, you know, how is, how is he? I'm like, uh, you probably going to hate him. <laughs> like it's, yeah, I don't, I don't know that he's your, I think she might've already bought the tickets before she asked yeah. us. Right. And we were both like, you know, mm, you know, and she, oh, wait. so anyway, we get, we finally get. So it. I don't know Jim Norton. He a bit, blue he, oh beyond blue uh but he's you know he's interesting you 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 know him if so you saw a great him. gig for a mother and her son to enjoy Not, together. my son's my son's 20 right but right? still and, and he knew him he knew us trust me he knows they, they yeah my, you remember me and my son went to see uh Chappelle last year yeah, and, and yeah. that it was you know laughing but you just looking straight ahead <laughs> well yeah that now Chappelle Chappelle is this huge auditorium this huge uh, yeah. arena this is this is a comedy club, so there might be like two hundred people, yeah. if that kind of st stacked in in this place. So no, Jim Martin, I, I'm not. I mean, he's he used to be with o Opie and Anthony, and and okay, and, and yeah, you would recognize him. He's been on a couple things. He's been on the Joe Rogan podcast. He knows everybody. He's he's been around, and he's actually a brilliant guy. He's a weird weird guy, uh, but and he um, he's excellent on radio and he's excellent interviewer, like conversationalist. As a comedian, you know. It's one of those things, right? I'm, 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 it's a pretty high, but, but he, uh, he does, he does his thing. And, um, well, we will go to walk in and thinking, well, you might not be like it, but at least we'll sit in the in our back, you know, I know yeah. it's like a big place. Yeah. Buy we'll, tickets at the door. Just walk in. We're cool. Let's get in the back. Dude, they sat us touching the stage, touching the stage. And thankfully though, it was, it was far enough to the corner. I was, I could touch the wall behind the stage. And my leg, literally my knee is touching the stage. Okay. And uh, so he comes out. And the thing was, you forget about these comedy clubs. Uh, or I mean, I don't go to them that, that often. So you pay and it doesn't cost that much to get in. But once you're mm -hmm. in, it's every person in there. You got to get two items. Right. right. So that's where they make their money. I just come from dinner. I'm stuffed. Had a couple beers uh, at dinner. I don't want any, you know. So then it's like, we got to buy two. So this is where I was lucky that, you know, if a comedian was going to pick on you sitting on the front row or sitting near the front row, I ordered three cheesecakes. <laughs> <laughs> and I forget what else we had. I think I, I think I got a glass of wine that I didn't even drink. But, you know, so, I'm real hardcore, hardcore comedy here. Slices of cheesecake on the table. Yeah, in front yeah. Of uh, I thought you meant you had to order drinks. Well, it's items you know you, yeah. you could you, it could be it could be food items it could be whatever but it's two items per so um i went with the various various kinds of cheese cheesecake sampler av available but uh and he did what it and he was all right 
uh, his last five minutes were kind of painful. Like it's almost like some personal stuff. It's almost like, you know, you, you're like, dude, this is therapy. If you just really, <laughs> and here's here, here will encapsulate my, my wife's take on this. When we leave, you know, walking out there, you know, just, I forget who made the comment first and, uh, might've been my son asked, well, what do you think of it? Whatever. You know, all my wife says is I'm just going to pray for that guy. I'm going to, I'm going gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pray for that guy tonight. I'm going to say a rosary tonight and I'm going to pray. And she, I'm sure she did. Yeah. But uh, she I probably like, prayed prayed for herself uh, for forgiveness to uh, for being in there. Uh, she didn't know. She didn't. Know. But but that's I don't. You know, I was laughing thing as I don't think that's the uh, the impact they're looking. <laughs> it's like, come come check out this comedian, and you'll be praying for him um, when you're done. But yeah, it was all good. All good. Gotcha. And so I'm. It might have been that same night that when y'all were there. Um, Joey and Riley had like a little girls night out with some, some others or something. So I went to just a, uh, like a bar or lounge in a, in a restaurant here. A friend of mine playing music. Uh, he just, you know, piano player plays like a lot of Stevie wonder Elton John type stuff. So I just said, all right, it's kind of chill. I'll go sit there at the bar. Um, didn't know anybody. So it was kind of, you know, great. I sit there by myself. It's some of the things I do best. Yeah, again, I uh, try to not talk to people. Um, is, <laughs> <laughs> you, you get that out of the way once a week here. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah like there's, once a week. There's, there's this woman, and not that there was, you know, there was no conversation or anything, but so she's sitting there, and there was like a stool between us. And in a very short amount of time, she had you know three martinis nice. and a dozen charbroiled oysters. And I hear her talking to the bartender. I'm not paying attention or whatever. So um, wait, this one, this one, this one woman. Yeah. Three martinis and a dozen yeah. charbroiled oysters. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Within 30 minutes. Was not her first rodeo. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> but then, you know, as when it was, you know, the guy brings her, her, her tab. And she tells me, she says, you know, I got to get a boyfriend and start, start paying for these things. <laughs> <laughs> My entire response was, good luck with that. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs> good luck. Yeah, I'm not applying. Not applying. So you no, were saying. No, I did because she couldn't do math. So she was saying, oh, you know, I, I'm a bartender, so I like to tip generously, but I can't figure out. Bill's like $52. How much do you know, should I give him? Uh, if that's uh, uh you should give let's 10, see that's five 10, yeah 10 40 yeah, that's that's it <laughs> five 20 percent. times two be 10 40 20 percent 20 percent you know unless it's really like i said you know if it's somebody really knocking it out of the park doing doing well yeah you, you i mean, just do 20 percent whatever yeah no yeah and you know and then but said that the the tip or like i said you know the game i like to play is you kind of you, you you tip the minimal that they don't look at you weird yeah. on the credit card and then hand them cash on the side trust me that's that they waiters and waitresses they that's 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 it thank you that's that's the that's the ones that make you know you make them happy you know if they're good if they're good but uh yeah i'm just that's one of the things i'm i'm super annoyed with now that more and more and more things where they force you to pay uh you know they don't take cash All right and everything is built in for a tip like stuff you would never tip for you know, like, right, right. Where they, you know, it's, yeah, can I get a fountain drink here at the 7 Eleven? And they, they turn the thing around. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you want to yeah. chip? Yeah. Yeah. No. How about, how about, how about, no. Um, Are the, the ones other? that then ask you if you'd like to add a tip? Man, listen, I don't know what's going on. And it was, it happened at two different airports. And maybe it's just an airport thing. And, and I get it because uh, labor markets are so terrible and you can't find anybody. You know, I, I get I understand what's going on trying to run businesses. It's tough. But man, these places. Um, so the upside is a lot of these airports have nicer. Well, not West Palm. West Palm's a, the airport's a dump, too, by the way. Absolute dump. <laughs> uh, but Houston Airport is, 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 is really super nice now. And they've been expanding and these great things. But some of these, um, the, uh, the nice little restaurant bar things, you not only, ha not only do you 
not uh, pay, not only do, do they not take cash, you have to pay by, you have to order by the app, oh, right? Lord. And pay that way and using your phone and- Which means they get all your info. Listen, so we sat down and this was on the way out there. We got nothing, you know, it's gonna be a kind of a long flight. It's, you know, mid, late afternoon. Um, a little time before the plane uh, takes off, fast more. You know, let's, let's get a couple beers. Let's grab a couple beers before we get on the mm-hmm. plane. You know, just, you know, that's, that's the best part of a trip. Best part of a trip is you got fun days ahead of you. Let's start it off. Have a couple beers here in the airport. That ended up being a stressful situation because the guy was nice. He was good. He was setting things up. We did a couple. So we, it comes time to like, we're trying to figure out how to order these things. And at, at time, I think we got, I ended up telling him what we wanted. And then I had to like back figure. We we're trying to back figure like how to press it on the, we already got our beers, but like, let's get these things ordered. So she starts, you know, and God bless my wife because she knows how I am. I was, I, I, I was losing it after like 60 seconds. She's better. She's doing the things, doing the things. She's having trouble. She says, it's what's my email address. At once I'm like, man, screw that. I said, I shouldn't have to give anybody any personal information to pay for uh, two beers here. (laughs) Just, I swear to you. I said, "Ah, I'm going to handle it. I chugged the rest of my beer. I took a 20, stuck it on the top of the bottle, put it on the counter. (laughs) It's just like, yeah, you figure it out, bro. And it wasn't his fault. You know, I mean, no, but, but, but um, I mean, like the next airport we went to is almost the same way. Like the, the, uh, the waitress and it's on the way back, go to order some food, whatever. And I said, do we have to use this thing? She said, oh, please, because uh, we're going to lose our job if we don't get people to use these things. And I'm thinking the Superdome uh, now is cashless, isn't it? I don't. Remember. You went for the football. You went to, for the Saints game there. I think it's cashless. LSU Stadium is cashless. Uh, yeah conspiracies there that's how they get us y'all mm-hmm. that's how they get us that's why they want to get rid of your stoves man you can shut off the power you can't it's hard to shut off the gas but <laughs> yeah i don't know like i said i'm 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 you know uh, the, the older i get the more <laughs> let's well, start paying i don't, I'm I don't start pay, cash so let's start paying my bills and a cash in an envelope there you go take that no record no record this happened Except yeah, my don't receipt. need a receipt. <laughs> Give me my receipt. Give me my receipt. Um, but yeah, we're gonna. Uh, what was the other thing? Oh, ended up uh, get to Hertz. We land, and I used to kind of like more when it's okay. Here's your slot. Here's your car you picked. Right. Go, go get it. Now it's like, hey, welcome to the. You're in the president circle, which is nothing. They give that a nice name. That I got. I'm no high level nothing with Hertz. The president circle. You know all they really had in there. Were Mustang convertibles. I saw yeah. a picture of y'all cruising in a convertible. And thank you. Dude, you went from what did you have a couple of weeks ago? The the big Dodge um or the Chrysler <laughs> when you were in when you went from Lafayette to Thibodeau. What were you driving? <laughs> Charger. Yeah. Well, the one in Lafayette they gave me. They gave me that cherry red charger. Right. This time I had to actually choose it myself just because I mean, yeah, there was nothing. There was I, I want to say there were three Ford uh mustang convertibles and something even worse but uh no 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 disrespect to mustang lovers out there they even get our gas s- operated ones they were gas operated yes they were and uh they couldn't couldn't uh couldn't even we had two big suitcases because we you know a bunch yeah. of tr- dress clothes and stuff couldn't even get the suitcases in the trunk maybe one you know, like put them in the back it was ridiculous man looked like you know mid- midlife crisis guy with his <laughs> yeah you ever is, did, did, did you try sitting in the back seat of that car oh my gosh no yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't it yeah. was, it's, no but, my son used to have a mustang and it was you know t- t- I, it, you i couldn't even get in the back seat i'm not hating on them look guys i'm not hating on them and like i said people do what they do now that said so the saturday that we basically had to ourselves and it was a great day for it because it was uh it wasn't a super bright it was it wasn't a super sun sunny day it was a nice day uh warm ish but not super hot because mm. so pop the top you know now that was the other thing as soon as we start leaving the airport the first time my wife says oh we ought to take the top the top down i'm like please don't touch anything because i could ju- we be the type of people that would somehow figure out a way to have the top flapping <laughs> you the know ejector button <laughs> yeah now my, my wife loves to play with the buttons on cars when she gets in these you know 
And she's always like syncing. Well, let's sync our phones up to the uh, to the car. I'm like, no, yeah. don't. It's like <laughs> it ruins. So every time you get in, it's like, what crap am I listening to? Oh, that's on your phone. Hang on. Let me, uh, you know, but um, yeah, but I guess it not. And by the way, by the time we left and we only drove the thing one day. Yeah, one day. Yeah. Drove it to the hotel. Didn't touch it again. Took it out on the on the Thursday night. Didn't touch it on the Friday. Took it out on the Saturday. Brought it back on the Sunday. The back window wasn't working by the time we brought it back. <laughs> it was like, I love convertibles, man. Um, I don't. That's yeah. the whole thing. I mean, if you owned a convertible, you know, how many times would you take the top down? Around here, they do it a yeah. lot. And it's a bunch uh, of middle. It's a bunch of midlife crisis guys. Uh, I don't know. I can't say midlife crisis because the guys I see doing that, they're way past midlife. I mean, like a bunch of, a bunch of three quarter to four fifth life guys. Uh, <laughs> the whole stretch. Yeah. They're just saying, I'm, I, I'm, I'm going, we, um, I wanted to, I'll keep circling back my, my, my head here, but, um, and it, this is for a Cajun. I, you know, I don't No, I'm not, you know, a lot of friends of mine have eaten some weird stuff. I don't, you know, if you're Cajun, you've tried stuff, you've eaten stuff. Most people haven't. So we're in uh, Fort Worth and people recommended, uh, everybody's pushing, got to go to this, uh, lonesome, lonesome dove, lonesome dove, uh, restaurant, cafe, whatever it is. Is it based and, on uh, the, the book? TV apparently I'm, I'm sure it's named after that, you know, but uh, it's, it, so it's, it's apparently it's an iconic Fort Worth. It's an old, the stockyards area. And it's one of those places doesn't look like anything on the outside. It's only mm -hmm. nondescript just, and it's really. It's for fall inside, but it's sort of like it's cool Western kind of fall, fall expensive mm -hmm. as all get out. But so we said, okay, so they said you probably should, so we couldn't really get reservations, but they said, you know, walk up and you might be able to get. So we just just randomly hit it. We got there about 10 minutes before the door open. There was some, a couple people in front. So we go in and said it's a four hour wait on the table. Cool. <laughs> if you want to four. Mm -hmm. Four hour wait on the table or. If there's some spots at the bar, you can do my preference. And I got my wife yep. trained now. It's funny. She likes it too. Like, man, listen, give us the option. We're sitting at the bar. And so it must. I don't understand why anybody, especially if it's just two people, why you wouldn't. Well, and we had, we had, we had, uh, we had a third, but you know, we got, we, so, so we, yeah, we got said, you get the best end. service. We got the, we got the far end where I get the far end and I'm talking to the bartenders all night and meeting, meeting folks. Um, but, um, you know, we're just looking at the menu and what they specialize in. So we had, we had their, their, their appetite, one of their, one of their appetizer specials. It's a little tray with, it's a, it's a certain kind of sausages. Now this is a mix. I can tell you, I've never, I've never had a hankering for either of, well, for these things, but you're like, I got, we got to give it a shot. Got to give it a shot. Rabbit and rattlesnake. I'd have probably tried the rattlesnake just to say I had. I don't think I'd, I don't know going for the. I don't even uh, know which. I don't even know which one was which. I had one of each because they can't. They can't. They can, it came out neatly in three. That's what. How, that's how the appetizers came I out. I mean, how many rabbits does it take to make a sausage? I don't know how many rattlesnakes. Yeah. Right. You know, like ah, it's all right. It's all right. You know, it's, it's, you know, I can't. I, I I can't say that you know I'd ever go back and say, man, you know what I got a hankering for right now. <laughs> yes, yes. Could you tell me if you have any rattlesnake sausage on your menu, please? Man, man, could I go for some rattlesnake right now? But um, and here's what here's what's I mean, you talk about a small world, okay? So we're sitting, and if you don't, if you didn't know this about me, if you hang around me out in public where I'm actually going to be social. Uh, we're gonna know each other like don't 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 think you're gonna that, be next yeah, to me for more yeah. than two I'm minutes i'm okay to getting to know a stranger yeah, that oh, i never have to talk to again i love exactly. that exactly it blows my wife's mind how like how do you why do you you know so we're sitting there we're on our corner in the end we're doing whatever and you know i mean all in whatever and the you know my my son got the 60 dollars steak whatever that thing <laughs> that's what my wife yeah, and that's I yeah, my wife and I are smart enough now to realize, man, we split that. We like, I mean, that's like, oh, you'd be offended if we ordered something. And no, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I mean, because I wasn't that hungry. The rattlesnake and rabbit were filling me up, man. I mean, I just uh, so we're sitting at the end of the bar, and um, this, this this woman comes up and she's ordering whatever, and, and she ordered she ordered a bottle of wine. And that's when you can always tell somebody's different level when they don't walk up and say, you know, give me 
they're specifically ordering a bottle of wine yeah. that these guys had to go somewhere else to get like in the warehouse or in the whatever she's nice enough and i forget i don't know what she wasn't booth for or anything huh? no i wasn't no she didn't she didn't you know she didn't she said she she wasn't ordering like barefoot merlot okay uh <laughs> so uh I forget how, what she said or whatever. And I just, I, I don't even know the comment I made. I just made a joke about, I was like, man, you know, they probably have to go to HEB to get that. Like, you realize that? Like, you're like, you know, somebody's in a car right now going and try to find what you just ordered. We're just joking. Come to find out. So they're from here. They're from where we live. Oh, wow. They go to our church. Oh, wow. Now we got a huge church, so we don't really yeah. know them. But then, like, I think their daughter probably went through one of the programs my wife runs. And it was kind of just, just fun. And that dude, by the way, I'm that's drug. I'm I'm falling asleep on the thing. It's because he he's in banking. He's he's some big wig with some. I, I should have followed up with him, but I was too busy enjoying the rattlesnake and rabbit. But um, anyway, they had uh, it was funny. They have uh, two two kids at TCU. Oh, have we have we been have we been on the on the air since the national championship game? Did we ever talk about Georgia TCU the championship? Oh, I don't think we talked. We've been on, but we haven't talked about that. Well, anybody. So this has been a, this has been a while now, y'all. It was it was a slaughter. It was right. It was y'all might have y'all. Anybody's not y'all forgot about that by now. But it was what sixty five. It was a lot, like a lot, 60, to not a lot. Like sixty five to ten. So I'm just like, yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Because TCU is in Fort Worth, right? And, and the guy said, uh, yeah, you know, we kind of choked. And I started giggling. I said, man, y'all didn't choke. I said. That's, a, that's unfair to the yeah. to the people on that squad to say they choked. Yeah, they're gonna play yeah. the game of their lives. Yeah, you yeah, played up to your potential to their potential. Georgia if played up to theirs. If they'd have played the game of their lives, they'd have only lost by 30, 35. They had they had an off night. They lost by fifty five. Okay, or whatever it was. But uh, but no, that was that was <laughs> we choked. Do you really? Yeah. No, you can't choke saying that score. Yeah. Well, oh, the other thing I wanted to talk about cars. Um, so just so happened. So today, after five, about five months, uh, so my son's car came in. So we oh, finally, it's finally been assembled. Yeah, I think it was assembled in Mexico. Actually, I learned that it was assembly. Uh, so it's, and it's, they it's a, they drive it here with a couple of people coming up. Though <laughs> I think so. I think it had fentanyl on the back of it when we got it, man. I mean, like, I, hey, man, so, since you're gone anyway, you might. I think they had some human, some, some human trafficking and a little fentanyl in the uh, yeah. in the back, but uh, no. So, um, so I go to pick it up today, and I and you know sales, you know car dealerships, man. They they get mm -hmm. they get a bad they get a bad rep because they, they usually deserve. Them. And uh, yeah, <laughs> my sales guy was okay. I mean, he's you know nice enough guy. Now, I mean, I just I just I got along with him, and I told him beforehand, look. I mean, we're not, we're not going to finance anything through you, right? I'm going to take care of that on my end. Yeah. I'm showing up. I'm going to have you. I had to tell them, send me what's what, send me the invoice, send me the whole thing. I'm going to show up with a cashier's check. There you go. That's it. No discussion. We're yeah, we're done. Pretend this is pretend I'm peeling out hundred dollar bills. You know, now I may have borrowed some of this money, but it ain't from you but still yeah i like to tell people this will be the easiest deal you ever made never is because that's not what they want they don't want to sell you a no uh-uh they, they, they want, want to spike up they want you to borrow through them they want, they and, and they want to sell you the warranties okay mm -hmm. and here's the deal and i just I, I keep hoping i keep hoping to run into an f and i was you know finance insurance and whatever a uh, uh, finance guy at a, at a dealership that will break the mold where I walk out of there and say, you know what? That was, that was all right, man. The car buying experience will never end well. As soon, as long as you got to go through those, you got to no. go sit in that guy's And office. they've got to do, you know, I, I would think they do a lot of profiling or evaluation of the personalities of the people they hire because everyone's exactly the same. Or they're the only ones that make it because the guy today, yeah. he's got his picture of his family. And hey, look, I'm sure the guy's a nice guy. You know, he's probably, he might even told me his age. He's about 10 years younger than me, 10, 15 years younger than me. And, you know, we start. And I got, I got, you know, my son with me because it's his vehicle. It's going to be right. registered, registered to him. All right. You know, I'm, we're just, you know, but 
you know, he yeah, you're the financier. It. Yeah, that's right. He ain't paying for it, but it's his, you know. So, mm-hmm. the, so, and the other thing is great about cars, car dealerships. So, you, when they're trying to sell you a vehicle, man, look, it's dependable. It's yeah, made it. well. It's got a fantastic warranty. Right. Right. So, it's all like, man. Now, as soon as you commit, I'm buying it. Then they want to tell you how much everything costs when it breaks. Yeah. Right. That's yeah, a fantastic warranty, but it don't oh, last forever. Oh man. Cause then, oh, and, and this guy, it, like I said, it's a stereotype. Right. And I'm just sitting there and I'm glad I'm there with my son. It's kind of funny. I'm coaching my son afterwards. Cause he didn't have to worry about it. Cause he started, he started a couple of times asking my son stuff and I let him go. Right. And then I cut it off. Like, yeah, no, that's all right. Just go to, you know, well, how long do you intend on owning this vehicle? Young man. Two weeks. It was, yeah, he <laughs> yeah. was cool. It was like, uh, I'm hoping a long time. And well, that just plays into the, the you know, the crap yeah. they do you, right? Yeah. Well, I don't, how, about, how many miles do you estimate you're going to put on this vehicle per, you know? Yes, yeah, zero. It's like, yeah, man. So, yeah, so you do, you, you, you do that. You kind of just try to get it out there. And I'm coaching, I'm coaching my son on the way out. Hey, man, listen, you just got to know when you go in there, the guys that are in there, they ain't your friends. All right. No. They're nice. They're going to say nice things to you. They're going to, right? And they and they want to do what's right for you, and they're going to tell you stories that are none none of them are true, and they're going to tell you about you know their vehicles and the time that this warranty boy they're so good they've got they've got this coverage on all of their vehicles, to, uh, both the car yeah, salesman it, and uh, both the car salesman and and the uh, and the finance guy listening to them talk at various times. Sounds like these guys each got like four or five cars, man. It's like, <laughs> yeah, and they probably didn't buy any of them from themselves. Man. I'm at a Ford place today, and one of the guys saying, "Well, you know, well, my, well, my Audi does this, and my blah 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 blah, and my blah 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 blah." And I'm like, "All right, yeah. whatever." Yeah, I yeah. mean that Audi that you you borrowing from the used car lot. Whatever, man. But uh, but yeah, so that's the uh, so 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 good for him. It's a much, it's a five five months late on the on the graduation uh, present, but he's uh, well, well, yep. And I, I guess I told my wife, I said, so between her and my sons, my, both my sons, I'm apparently the only person who doesn't have an app on my phone connected to my car. Like, I, I don't know. Hate if, that. I don't know if I could or not. Maybe I, maybe they're probably, I'm sure you that, cannot. I, that I just Joey never did. has it. And it's, you know, you go in there and it's searching for the phone or she'll call me from her, from the, you know, whatever. Yeah. The Apple. I don't even know what you call it. Apple Play system in yeah, the yeah. car. And the first thing I say is, put the damn speaker, put the phone by your ear, man. I hate all that noise. That's, but that's not, okay. So that, that, that annoys me. But what I'm saying, an app on their phone, you know, you can start your, you can start your car oh, yeah. from your phone. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. But the one, now some of it's kind of cool. You can like see what your fuel level is. You can see mm-hmm. how many, you know, you can see your, 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 your tire pressure. You, you, so, of course, you know, the, the, uh, um, the conspiracy theory guy, guy in me is like, you ain't the only person that's got that information, <laughs> right? Everybody, you know, some, somebody somewhere knows exactly where you go, exactly mm-hmm. what you drive, exactly, you know, tinfoil hat yeah, guy. How, how fast you go. And that's what uh, my son, I don't know, something with, I guess, his insurance company offered. Yeah, he'd get a potential discount if he plugs this thing into his car. That is basically oh. the yeah. And I yeah. said, no. <laughs> he said, why? I said, because you could also get a potential penalty. Yeah, progressive. Uh, goes, I think it's prog- yeah. Yeah, yeah, progressive pushes that a lot. Um, well, now what's funny is so um going back about three years ago, four years ago. So my car was the newer car. Part of that was because I wrecked mine. <laughs> Right. Mm-hmm. So my car has been in the garage. We only got room. We got, I got a two car garage. But we know how that works. You got a two car garage. Yeah, that means you got a one car garage. It means you got a one car garage. And because and part of that is, honestly, if, if I had a garage that was legit two car, I would pretty much have it empty and we would legit park two cars in it. Dude, I, if my garage was empty and we parked two cars in there, you'd still be banging. Doors. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. You can't. You can't do it. You can't do it. So, um, so we got, so, so my car, we just sort of have the habit and it kind of works out because usually my wife goes to work before me, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and a lot of times I don't leave, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I work out of the, I'm either right. traveling or I'm here. So my car is the one always parked in the garage, but my car is now like number three in line here. As long as like new, 
That's right. You get, you get the outside now, man. I don't know. I hope they don't figure that out. I mean, I don't hope, uh, cause I'll probably go for it. I mean, like my son's car, you know what I'm saying? It's like brand new. It's like, yeah, I guess it should be the, yeah, it's his be. car, but you paid for it. You know, something goes wrong. You paying for it too. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The flip side of that is, oh wait, don't make me have to wake up. Don't make, don't make me have to wake up early to let you out the house. Yeah. You know, when you, uh, do that, uh, that's what I always tell my son, because again, we've, yeah, in townhomes, they've got little, you know, you can park a couple cars in the front but then there's little parking pads you know uh and my son will always park there and i was you know we like every other neighborhood now have you know people walk around at night and tug on your car door uh, uh it's every, yeah it's so sad yeah Everywhere. and i tell them i said you park by the garage i'm gonna park over there because you know if they take something out of mine i could care less do you see uh yeah i'm remembering i don't I'm remembering the numbers right in the first two weeks of this year, did I send you <laughs> I this? No, I saw it. I New, New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans had 400 yeah. car thefts in the first. So first of all, congratulations, New Orleans. I mean. Yeah, man, you, you are, you know, just setting the bar and, and why are number one and widening the gap. It's hard to give stats that even people that know that new Orleans has become, uh, you know, you know, thank you, Latoya, um, just become yeah, what it's you, become. You got to figure out how many cars get stolen that day. Don't even report. Exactly. Exactly. It's cause that's the ones that are reported. And I take that as maybe I'm wrong. I'm not taking that as just somebody opening the door. That's I'm thinking that's people stealing the car. Man, it's, if they're doing that much, you could pretty much catch them. Cause it's not, it's, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a full-time job. That's somebody right now. Uh, th th there, there are people right now. They're waking up in the morning, having their morning coffee. They're reading the times, pick a Yoon. Is Tom pick a still around? I don't even know if it's still around. Um, yeah, it's, uh, well, you we might call it. It's a new Orleans advocate now. They wake up in the morning. They're reading the times, pick a Yoon. They're having a you big pie. Then they go and do some theft. That's what they're doing. <laughs> well, you can hey, do a commercial. Man. Yeah. While you were watching this commercial, three cars in new Orleans were stolen. Was buddy one of, of them mine, yours? Buddy of mine, I kind of shared a text that he goes, yeah, man, we drive, we leave our cars in uh, Jefferson or something like, like they, when they drive up from the bayou, they leave their cars. I forget where they park them, but they Uber in. Yeah. <laughs> I have a friend uh, who uh, was a nurse in New Orleans and she moved back to Thibodeau. Cause she just said, in the, you know, like in six months, her car got broken into three times. Yeah, well. Come on, New Orleans, be better. Well, and then I saw Latoya was on like one of the, the Sunday morning shows talking was about how really? they are doing. Yeah, how, how they are doing better. Oh, I thought she was going to be talking about the uh, divorce lawsuit thing or not lawsuit. No, she wouldn't go into that. She wouldn't go she into would that. <laughs> That's well, okay. And neither will we. Good mm. luck to both of them. We hope they can work it out. <laughs> Happy couples all around. Work it, work it out. You know what would have made them happier? If they had the right scent. I'm walking there. <laughs> I took a, I took a picture because, and this is a shop when I'm in, I'm in, when I'm walking through Palm beach, wherever the heck the phone phone thing we are. And this one, and there was a, one of the, on the street and it was a new sign. So they, I don't, they just opened it up. I don't think they had a permanent sign and I don't know how long when, but I thought to myself, this is the stupidest sounding business or product or what it, or, or service I've ever heard. But if it's ever going to work, it's going to work on this stretch with these idiots it was called aroma 360 it is a luxury scenting store apparently they mix your own scent you know what i'm saying you get you your own cologne type of apparently so bro apparently you can walk in there they do that for you well but yeah uh, so it doesn't necessarily smell like you no i guess the, i don't I was going to say, why do I need I to pay somebody in. to buy something that smells like me? I I, smell no, no, like I think me. I think you get to decide what you want to smell like, yeah. right? Yeah. I want Probably to smell, your own personal blend. I want to smell like a lion surveying his territory on the savannah. What's that smell like? Poo! I don't want to smell like that. I want to smell. Okay, I want to smell like some old spice. Ah, I try to smell like a lion. Lion stink, bro. Yeah, yeah. so uh, it's, you know, I just go whatever smell I got. <laughs> Oh, I just thought of this in the airport on the way back. 
we're sitting there and it's, and I, I enjoy, like, it's, it's funny. I, and I, I, I don't know if my wife appreciates it or doesn't appreciate it, but she gets to end up talking to a lot of people that she would not have talked to if she wouldn't have been with me, because bro, I, we sat down at this little hole. Like I said, the West Palm beach airport's a dump and the people in there are miserable. If I sound like I'm dumping on it, y'all, I'm just reporting. Okay. I'm just reporting. And the people, what I'm saying is it's not so much the, the, the passengers that are miserable, although they are, but the people working in the airport, oh my gosh, they just, they have lost, they, they don't want to even be alive anymore. So we're sitting there and it's three tables kind of close together. I mean, you know, you walk in a, in a, in a terminal, an airport and you know, your tables are right there. It's because it's, you know, the, the restaurants, whatever, they just spill out into the, into the, the thing. So a couple here from Maryland, nice couple from Maryland. We've went, I, we ended up meeting because I decided to get, and then some older couple here from like Ash, Asheville, they live in Asheville, North Carolina. It don't take much for me, bro. We start, we sit down and look, we're so close to each other. Like we're, we're sort of separate tables, but literally I could reach over and grab her water glass. I mean, that's how tight <laughs> everything is. So they're starting to fight with trying to figure out the payments, right? There's, there's, there's some older folks and she's complaining about stuff. So I, so I just shoot a couple of jokes that way. So boom, all of a sudden we got new friends. So we're all talking about life. And then I look over and the two people from uh, Maryland are laughing. They're, they're obviously laughing at the joke. It was so I kind of pulled them in. I got getting back to what was funny was, so we start telling about, Oh, where'd you go here? Where'd you go here? Right. Just whatever. <laughs> and the guy, the guy, old guy sitting there, and I forget what she said when she went. And he was like, Yeah, when she did that, I went to the zoo. <laughs> she said, I, She went like, I don't know, like to the beach for four hours or something, four hours. He goes, I went to the zoo. And Paul, he says, That was a mistake. <laughs> he says, That's a miserable. He says, I don't know if the animals were dead or gone. And she's like, I told you, you don't go to the zoo around lunchtime. It's too hot. And it was so funny to be sitting next to a table of two people probably been married forever. You know, all the money. (laughs) She's she's fussing him about, you know, not going to the zoo by himself at the right time. Well, you know, know, the, the animals aren't out at noon. And I just jumped in with her. I was like, I was having fun. I'm saying, yeah, dude, don't you know nothing? <laughs> you lucky you got this woman here to tell you how to go to a zoo. Yeah. You just, you just sitting there. Well, welcome to my yeah, you should you, you should sit down and thank her right now. There you go. There you go. But uh, yeah, making friends. Oh, man. Let's see. Did we catch it all here? We talked. I think about we got it all, man. Oh. The beach. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, last note, just because it, it stuck with me. So walking through the stockyard area of Fort Worth, which, again, let me go back. And, for as much as I've dogged Palm Beach, Florida, this episode. You've been on the opposite end. So Fort Worth, did, Fort Worth was just was just fantastic. And part of the nice area, really cool bars, really cool restaurants and stuff. There's the John Wayne Museum. Oh, wow. Right? Okay. Now what the? But he's not from Texas, is he? No, I have no idea. I think it was just a good marketing thing, right? So you, you walk in there, and here, I, to, to be honest, we had limited time, and we were like, okay, I don't know what you wanted, you know, like you know, what I'm saying, like we, we we knew we only had maybe three hours, four hours to be there. So it's like that it sounds like a lot of time, but if you're actually going to see a museum, that's going to take up almost a day. right. So we kind of walk into the the open area, you know, like the lobby area. It's a pretty nice store and stuff, and. uh I think they wanted like $26 a head to, and you know, so that's what I'm doing. I'm sitting there going, man, 75. So I'm just asking the people like what's in there. Oh, it's, you know, scenes, from <laughs> stuff from stuff. And, and, and don't get me wrong. As much as I love, I love me some, some Westerns and stuff. I, you know, I, I couldn't really tell you. I can tell me a handful of John Wayne. Yeah, movies. It's like, can I get that on Netflix? So if you told, if you told me, Oh, that's the, that's the saddle he rode in true grit. I'd be. All right. All right. That, that's that you know, was worth twenty six dollars, right? Yeah. But here's the funny thing: the coolest thing, and I don't know if they know this or not, but the coolest thing they have, I have no doubt. No, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. I didn't go in. I didn't pay my twenty six. But if you'd have told me before this, like this is what you can, this is what you might be able to see. Mm-hmm. And it has nothing to do with John Wayne. Right when you walk in, there is Roy Rogers' horse. Uh, trigger trigger and his dog bullet they're both stuffed 
All right. That, that's what's kind of creepy, too. Like, obviously, it's not like they're, you know, I mean, they've been dead. <laughs> yeah. freaking, the caucus. Thing. Freaking, Car- 70, carcass. freaking 75 years, right? But, and I, and at first I thought, I can't. Wait a minute. It's the John Wayne Museum. How, it can't be Roy Rogers. Now, the other thing, too, is so many generations now, they have no idea who Roy Rogers was. Yeah. Honest, honest to goodness. I mean, old like we are. I yeah, don't everybody, remember. a lot of kids don't know who John Wayne was. I don't remember. Yeah, I remember John Wayne. I don't really remember Roy Rogers. I mean, no, I really don't. Okay, but I mean, he was he was huge. He was huge. And but I mean, even people that don't really know, you know, Roy Rogers. You, know, you could actually a lot of people in their forties or fifties. What was the name of Roy Rogers' horse? There's a lot of them that would say, "Yeah, uh, trigger. trigger, trigger." Right. I don't think I got the dog name though. Yeah, bullet bullet was less known. Trigger was the big one, but it's so it's like it's there, and I'm like. That's odd. Um, you know, well, that's got to be just like a replica or something. Why? So I thought to ask, you know, the person that was, you know, the cashier or whatever. I was like, is that? Yeah, that's, those, those are authentic. I'm like, Aha. and then she could tell. She must have got that question before. Because I'm like, what? Hi, how is it here? She says, well, I said, oh, I remember I said, I thought that would have been like in the Roy Rogers. <laughs> yeah, because there's Museum. one of those, I'm sure. She says, well, there was, but it closed. Oh, uh-huh. uh, and then it was bought by some other museum and that apparently closed. So apparently Western museums are not a booming business. Apparently. Maybe, maybe the ticket price so, <laughs> could have something but, to do with that. But so it ends up at, at, at this place. And I was thinking, you ever thought Roy Rogers when he was alive would think <laughs> way after I'm dead. Right. I'm going to have Roy Rogers horse. <laughs> my stuffed horse and my stuffed dog is just going to be like, showing up at different museums you know it's it's on tour you know i said somehow i bet he never thought he might have thought one day this will be in my museum yeah yeah what about dale evans horse they didn't have hers in there no they had dale they had had dale stuffed she was stuffed right behind (laughs) (laughs) she didn't she didn't look too lifelike she didn't look no no i i forget what dale's um i got was pretty sexist Uh, right I can't believe we didn't stuff Dale's horse, man. I mean, what well, the heck? Today you would have. Today, yeah. Oh man, <sighs> Dale's horse would have been first. It, sh- it should have been. It's probably you know got a lot of you know grief and, and you know uh, obstacles to overcome in life that Roy's yeah. didn't have to. I just, I just don't know if it's me and maybe it's me. Um, but, but then I talked to you, but you know, you were famous for saying I am cheaper than I am lazy. So I think we both yeah. have a, mm-hmm. we both have a common sense. I think thing about, and I don't know what stuff's supposed to cost. Right. Cause my wife will like laugh at me sometimes when I go like, what, how much is that? Yeah. I am. St- I am constantly being stunned. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, by like 20, wait, you went 26. That, here's what I can't yeah, figure to, out. Yeah, to what? I mean, it's not like there's a big operating expense. They're not here's buying the new stuff. It's called, it's called opportunity. Like, like, listen, if you charge me 15, we're probably all three going in. You just made $45. I might even buy a stupid T-shirt on the way out. You tell me 26 ahead, I'm going to get a beer. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, it's like you got to learn. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe they know their business more than me. But uh, and like there was a. Uh, Apparently nice not because, little- you know, the museums are closing. Nice little coffee shop in our uh, hotel, which was well, kind of kind of crazy. But my wife got—I forget what she what, what she got. Like a, she said it was really good. It was a flat, whatever, dude. A, co- a coffee, a coffee. Right, for, those of you not watching, and I don't know why you're not watching. I'm holding it like a coffee, right? Eight bucks, eight bucks. I say, better be good. Like, man, you better be talking about that. You better be walking around the rest of the day saying, hmm. <laughs> Wish I had that flavor in my mouth. I don't want to eat anything else because I want that coffee flavor to stay on my palate. You know what coffee I'm drinking? The stuff they put in the room. And then when the when the uh, people in the hallway, I walk up to them. Hey, can I get some more coffees? (laughs) It's the coffee I'm drinking. That's the coffee I'm drinking. Not them eight dollar flat whites or whatever you got down there. But there you go. First of all, you talk about museums closing and stuff today. As we're you know recording this, um, I'm thinking Disney. Yeah, you know, Magic Kingdom in Orlando is probably closing, which means, um, what's the thing? Uh, the water ride, Splash Mountain, no more. Wait, no, no. Um, oh, th- yeah. th- that's today. Yeah. You mean the uh the Uncle Remus? Um. Uh huh. Yep. Zippity doo da. Oh, don't be no man. Don't do that. You get a shutdown. 
My, oh, my, what a wonderful day. There's nothing wrong with that song. Plenty no. of sunshine heading my way. Zippity doo da. I would buy parts from there if they had the guts to buy. If they had the guts to sell it, I'd buy me some uh, Song of the South stuff. Okay, hey, man, get on, you some memorabilia, some little statues. Come on, y'all. Now look, I will be the first to admit some of that stuff. <laughs> you gotta look back and go, "Woo!" <laughs> you know, we didn't worry about some stuff back in the day, but you know. Well, they better be closing down Water Boy. Yeah, not the ride, the movie. They need to pull Water Boy from every streaming service there is. No, don't That's do that because it's it, our people. Don't do that because if they pull Nacho Libre, I'll be very upset. I'll be very <laughs> upset because Nacho Libre is still one of my favorite movies of all time. All right, you know what? We 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 talked about That's it. That's enough. Greatest America. We came we came back. Eight, it was eight days, but you know, got to do what we got to do. We're gonna push the button. See if any of this sticks to the magical tape in the sky. We're not really sure how it works. And if it does, it's going to be a few more days. We don't even know how our earbuds and mics work. So we sure don't know how that stuff works. But hey, hope it did. Hope it did. If you want to reach us, it's Dave and Juan at ProtonMail.com. And there's a plethora of other places. You know right. where they are. Every kind of, you know, every website uh, that you or on, I don't know why I said website, but every <laughs> <laughs> podcast streaming service. Hey, hey. I had a friend of mine yesterday uh, who is actually a, a, a my sister's age a girl. My sister grew up with, you know, as your my sister was a couple years older than me, so she was like the, the good looking girl from down the street who you used uh -huh. to enjoy when she'd come over. Uh, but I had something on Facebook that I posted yesterday. This magic rocks thing, um, and some toy from the 70s and she said mm -hmm. oh what about sea monkeys and i said oh we talked about sea monkeys on my podcast a couple weeks ago and she said your podcast what am i missing I said <laughs> apparently the podcast <laughs> so there you go claudette listen up now she said she's gonna listen all the time but so Man. we're everywhere everywhere uh, podcast. Every, every, and look you found us this week do You're it again there. next week do it again next week I don't think Spotify or Apple podcast or any of that's, you know, Facebook, but that's not, that's not going anywhere. No. So come, come and get you some. And, um, you know, we'll try to, we'll try to be more, I want to say we're trying to be more punctual. It's going to seem by the time we do the next one, we're going to feel like it was yesterday because it was oh, really it's inside baseball stuff. Nobody needs to hear, but there you go. So, Hey, everybody, listen, every week we tell you and, and we always mean it, man. We really mean it this time. Yeah. It look, you got to get out there. It's not, it's not a suggestion. It's not a hint. It's not a subtle, uh, into it, not intuition. What's the word? No, it's, it's not an inference. There you inference, bruh. That's an educated man right there. That's right. That's right, man. We're not inferring Jack. It no. is a freaking it's a, it's a mandate. mandate mandate. You get out it. there. Try to have the best week of your life. Y'all starts with the best hour of your, uh, of your week. You just had it. You're welcome. Build on the day, build on the week. Let's get back next week. Talk about it, but uh, go get you some. Go get you some, everybody. All right. Time for us to tap. Get on out of here. Have a great one, everybody. Love you, bro. Back at you, man. All right. oh, I got nothing. I got, a, <laughs> I got a spaghetti waiting for me downstairs, but I got no weenies in it. Shame on you. Shame on you, man. Mm -hmm.